viewers and welcome to DG Model Works. This is DG and I am going to show you how to install a 21 pin DCC decoder in an Atherin Genesis SD60E. This video will specifically focus on a DCC sound decoder and even more specific it will be an ESU loc sound. So let's get started. The first things you will need, of course, a foam cradle and your SD60E. Next, we'll move up here and grab some stuff. We will take, uh, this is an ESU 21 pin Loke Sound version 5. And I will say, the decoder you choose for this, you can choose whichever one you want. But if you want all the lighting functions to, to operate properly, you need one with six functions. So we got our decoder, then your 28 millimeter speaker of choice, which I happen to have some TCES WOW speakers. So we will use that. And it's up to you whether you want to use any type of speaker gasket. You can use these uh, Soundtrack speaker gaskets or just regular glue. I like to use canopy glue. That's one of my favorite glues to use. This is a little bit more of a removable type glue. It's uh, water based and uh, it kind of uh, stays a little bit flexible. So if you want to remove something, it's a little bit easier to remove with this type of glue. Although it works and it holds very well, it is still a little bit easier to remove. So that's my glue of choice. And a couple tools that we will need. Since we will be removing some small Phillips head screwdrivers. Want a nice small Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm going to use my trusty KD grippers. Alright, the first step uh, to installing a decoder in this locomotive is to get the shell off. So find yourself a nice foam cradle or something safe to sit this on and turn it upside down. Now we need to remove four screws in this to get the shell off. Uh, the coupler pockets, one on either uh, side of there and there is a screw down in here and a screw right here and by the looks of it to get this screw out you need to take the fuel tank off. So let's start with the fuel tank. And we'll pop that off, set it out of the way. Uh, we'll do the coupler pockets next. So we'll screw that. I grab my KD gripper. Set that somewhere safe. Pull out the coupler pocket. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll remove uh, these two screws. I'll start with this one. Might have to move the truck a little bit out of the way. And this one you kind of have to go down in between the truck. You'll see what I mean when you go to do it. You might be able to get to it if you swing the truck real far to the other side. There's not much room. There we go. All the screws are out. Now if the screws are out as with any locomotive, carefully wiggle the shell off. Be careful, there's a lot of little detail parts. And pretty soon we'll be on the inside of it. There we go. Alright guys, uh, in the middle of uh, filming this decoder install, 
remember I said I was planning on using this 28 millimeter TCS wow speaker uh, in the meantime one of my packages showed up from Midwest Model Railroad and this is something that I ordered it's uh, from ESU it's a dual sugar cube with a bunch of different baffles uh, to install it in virtually anything uh, but what's interesting it comes with uh, baffles for uh, 28 millimeter round uh, location so I'm going to actually attempt to, to do to use these the dual sugar cubes and uh, you put these baffles together depending on the uh, available size you have so I'm gonna see if I can't make that work in this locomotive if not then it's gonna going to be the TCS wow 28 millimeter Alright, as we move forward with the uh, decoder install, uh, the decoder install itself is very easy, especially if you do non-sound. You don't even have to mess with a speaker, you just pull this uh, plug off and put your 21 pin decoder on there. Uh, and as I said, you need at least a six function decoder to control all the lighting. But it doesn't matter what brand or whether it's sound or not sound, you will still have to do some uh, programming at the end of your install. If you're going to use such something like a Tsunami 2, uh, JMRI will probably be your easiest uh, easiest way to do that. For me, I'm using Loke Sound, like I said, so the Loke programmer will be your friend with that. I may make a separate video for the programming part of this, uh, considering not everybody will be installing a loc sound uh, if you're installing a you know like a tsunami 2 or a TCS um, that will be something you'll have to program on your own I will not have any instructions for that all right here we have the uh, loc sound version 5.0 decoder other than plugging this right into your stock Atherin board, you do have these two brown wires that you need to solder to your speaker. Now, whatever decoder you use, make sure you get a speaker that will be compatible with it as far as ohms are related. Uh, that's one thing to, uh, to watch out for. All right, since I'm doing a uh, sound install, uh, before I even mess with the decoder, I'm going to remove this weight where the speaker goes because I want to make sure I can fit that ESU sugar cube um, speaker setup that I would like to use. So I want to do that first because I want to solder the speaker leads from the decoder onto the speaker before I put it on the board. So that's why I'm doing this step first. These screws hold the weight in only so once they're out you don't need to reuse them for anything if you want you can store your weight somewhere in your junk pile with the screws in case you ever want to make it a non-sound version again uh, you could put some weight back into it so as it turns out, I'm going to have to use the TCS WOW speaker. Uh, the baffles that came with the ESU Sugar Cube speakers will not fit inside the opening of the locomotive. So let's go ahead and solder these leads onto the speaker. All right, next you want to remove this DC jumper board and they can be on there pretty pretty snug. So take your time and work at it. And try not to uh, bend any of the pins. Next, you want to install your 21 pin decoder and it can only go on one way so you'll see what I mean if you've never done it 
line them up carefully the pins in the holes so you don't bend any of them and it can happen very easy push it on now all we have to do is glue in our speaker for the speaker install I'm actually going to use both one of these gaskets and some of my canopy glue uh, so you want to use your exacto knife or a tweezer and try to peel off just one side of the gasket for now we'll place that over the speaker first now you gotta peel off the other side to reveal the sticky part There we go. Now that we have the gasket on there, we'll sit this in place inside the opening. I took the liberty of sitting the locomotive on its side to make it a little bit easier. I'll route the wires out the top here. Now, on top of that, I'm going to put a couple dabs of my canopy glue on a couple spots on the back of this right at the corners, just to uh, make sure it does stay secure. I'm using a micro brush and dipping it into this because my cap gets clogged real easy on that. I'm just putting this in a couple spots. This stuff doesn't dry real fast, so you may have to take a little bit of a break during your decoder install, but it will flow down into the crack, so you want to get a fair amount on there. Now that gasket was pretty sticky, so it will hold it well on its own without this but maybe two or three spots. Now that we have the speaker stuck in there with the gasket and the glue, um, it should not vibrate, rattle, or anything at all with that gasket. If I didn't use that gasket, I would probably run a bead of this all the way around, either on the inside where the gasket is at the moment, or on the outside, just to make sure it was a real nice, secure fit. But everything should be good to go. If not, you can always come back and add some more glue. Now we'll let that dry before we move on to the next step, which is pretty much putting it all back together and testing it. Uh, the glue, if you use the same glue as I do, it will dry clear. So when it's clear, it's dry. Right now it's white. Um, but I would suggest testing it before you put the shell and everything back on, just to make sure everything is working. All right, I do want to address something while I am here doing this. Um, I know someone is going to mention it about why didn't I remove these plastic clips and solder all the wires onto the board. That is something you can do. I have done it. I do do it, but I don't usually do it as long as I am not having any problems. If I was replacing this whole board, then yes, all my wires I would put onto the new board, I would solder. But as long as the, everything is working fine with this, right from the, the manufacturer, and I'm not removing any of these, then I don't. Unless I start having problems uh, with lights or something not working, bad connections, then yes, I will. But until then, I don't mess with it. One other thing I would suggest doing uh, before putting the shell back on is to remove this little sticker. Uh, these decoders tend to get uh, pretty hot at times. And I would uh, feel a little bit safer knowing that there's not a piece of paper stuck to it. Now if you're confident that the uh, decoder is installed correctly and everything is operating as it should, all that's left to do is to put your shell back on and stuff all these wires back up in there. Uh, just take your time, get all the wires up in there and out of the way of anything such as the motor, the flywheels, and uh, make sure they're not pinched between the shell 
and the frame. And like I said, just take your time and uh, work your way up in there and get the shell on. There we go. There are a lot of wires to tuck in there. So just take your time, make sure you don't get any of them pinched anywhere, sticking out of the shell, or anywhere where they might get caught in the motor, or whatnot. And then, all that's left to do is to put your screws back in the bottom and your fuel tank. Uh, I'm not going to continue to show you that, that's kind of repetitive. It's self-explanatory, just the opposite of what you did to remove it. Alright, as far as uh, programming this locomotive and this decoder, I will save that for another video. Um, so, stay tuned for that on one of my next videos. And uh, I'll show you about programming the Loc Sound Decoder. Alright, hopefully this helped some of you guys out. I appreciate uh, you stopping by, watching this, all your support. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the bell icon to be notified for uh, some of my new videos when they come out. And give a big thumbs up. Take care, guys.